Hi and welcome back and it's my great pleasure to introduce Julia Llewellyn, a best-selling author of how many books? Um, this is my seventh book we're talking about today and I've just finished my eighth. That's just amazing. Does it get easier actually to like uh, to write so many books? And um, no, it gets harder and harder with each one and I think really? all authors would say that because you run out of things to write about. You know? We were just chatting <laughs> earlier about the fact that you get influence from all your characters. Is, yes. that, is that true? Like literally it's mostly people you know? Um, it's some, there's always a germ of people you know. There has to be I think. You can't introduce a character from absolutely nowhere but um, I'm lucky because I'm also a journalist and I've been doing journalism for 20 years now for national papers and I've travelled all over the world and had a lot of quite interesting experiences and um, been very lucky in that respect so I draw on them a lot in I my know. books. Thank goodness or I'd have run out I know ages because ago. otherwise you would have run out because yeah. you've seen so many different things, so many different cultures. Yes, luckily. And actually in this book there's a whole amalgamation of lots of different cultures. There are, yes. Ukrainian, <laughs> Indian, Yeah, English, you name it. Yeah. You name it, it's in here and all sorts of um, interesting things happen throughout the book. So you, the book we're talking about today is your seventh book. Uh, Ten Minutes to Fall in Love, um, and I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about it? Well, it's the book is about, the heroine is called Zoo, and she's a young woman who's not very happy. Her mother died of alcoholism when she mm. was in her teens, and she's had a very bad relationship with her father sort of as a result of this. And she basically left home as soon as she could, went off to be an aid worker, but she's now come back um, because she's lost her job. Yeah. And she wants to fix up her, fa her father with someone. And she ends up, bizarrely, because she's the most unromantic and cynical person in the world, working for a dating agency I know. and trying to find love <laughs> for, her for her father. So it's, um, yeah. I, I love the whole dating agency aspect. I think that's actually where a lot of the comedy came from yeah. because obviously you deal with quite um, sort of sad issues like loneliness mm. and there's um, alcoholism in it and drug addiction but I think the main thing that I found brilliant was the dating element yeah and uh, how far how did you research that well the dating I, I did talk to a few dating agencies about um, some of their sort of more interesting clients, shall we say, there's, for example, I used a real life example in the book of a woman who will only date um, Boris Johnson lookalikes. No, that was and, really, really funny. Well, it's it's, it's just basically like, you basically want Boris Johnson because yeah. all her all Yeah, her she says he has her. to be blonde, yeah. he has yeah. to be bumbling, he has to be posh, he has to be called Boris Johnson. And they're saying, <laughs> listen, have yes. you ever thought of looking, you know, spreading a net a bit more <laughs> widely? And she says, no, that's, you know, and they're saying, well, no wonder you can't find a boyfriend, love. And um, yeah, it was great fun talking to the people at the dating agencies. And then also at the end of the book, um, they actually, the Zoo's dating agency, which is called 10 Minutes to Fall in Love, go off to Ukraine with a bunch of guys yeah. to meet Ukrainian girls because there's a huge industry um, in the former Soviet Union with these agencies who take over American and British men yes. to meet these um, gorgeous women who are just absolutely divine. But um, I've been on one of these trips Have for you? work, yeah, which was, what was fascinating. It like? Fascinating. Um, and, but, you know, I, I think it's there are stereotypes about these things. You think, do you think these guys are all idiots you know mm -hmm. why are they leaving their home to go and look for these girls in a far-off land can't they meet a woman in their own country and the girls you think they're all just on the take basically they're just trying to fleece these guys yeah. for their money and it you know it's so cynical you can't believe the guys can't see what the girls want them for and it's no, just for a no, passport yeah. but actually when you meet these people they're human beings they're not just kind of caricatures and um the men are very lonely often and very sad. They're often divorced or widowed or something and they just need a fresh start. The girls are sweet girls who just have no opportunities in these yeah. countries and are desperate to get out. But they want to fall in love. They don't want to just take these guys. They actually do want love as well. And I made some good friends on the trip and, um, yeah, it was good fun. It really comes across actually in the book because you do learn, you know, obviously these guys, OK, you on the outset they look like losers but obviously zoo the main character who actually goes to the ukraine and chats to them she does realize that's yeah. right actually they are ultimately looking for love i mean if they can get somebody who's pretty beautiful and hot then <laughs> hey why not we're all, we're all human we kind of want someone attractive yeah and then you do actually learn that these women they're in situations where in their home country yeah it's not the best situation the no. men aren't that great there to them and no they, they want a better life and yeah. Why not, if it makes everyone happy in the end? And yeah. I think you actually did that very well, I really oh, thought. Oh, thank you, because it's, it it's controversial, and some people were saying, you know, but these men are awful, and these girls are awful, and how can you be kind to them? And But I think one of the messages I'm trying to get through in the book is you've got to be kind to everybody, that sort of circumstances are never quite as simple as they seem, and, you know, usually people have kind of pretty tough pasts, and you have to kind of look behind the surface and see what's really going on. And that's kind of a theme I noticed in the book, is people are ultimately trying to find someone to love. And yeah. And you see that 
with um, Zoo. Well, Zoo doesn't know it exactly. No. She's trying to run away because she had um, a mother who obviously um, passed away when she was a teenager, and it's mm. haunted her because her mother. Uh, her mother was basically an alcoholic yeah and she doesn't really realize what she needs in life she thinks she has to go to che chechnya and do mm. aid work and stuff like that but i think she actually did need a guy and there's a romance with that yeah there's quite a sweet romance yeah, it's i think very it's quite sweet. sweet i really yeah. like that romance but also there's there's other th there's a more loneliness in it because tony who's widowed the father mm. you know he wants someone to love and yes. then he has his own adventures as well uh, yeah as well about. he has a rather disastrous girlfriend he, he does, ends yeah. up with because basically he sort of jumps in a bit too quickly and get hooks up with somebody who's extremely unsuitable as we're to find out yes. um <laughs> but there's a funny ending with that yes you've got to read it to find yes. out yes <laughs> oh yes <laughs> no it's it's it, the ending is quite funny and again it's, it's true um that's based on my own real life experience really? into um a rather <gasps> murky world but let's yes that's all i have to ask you about that later that's, that's for another show <laughs> yeah not family viewing not perhaps. family viewing, no <laughs> and then you've got jillian the other character who's a single mother whose um husband left her for another woman yes so she's kind of left devastated with this difficult teenage daughter yes. who's getting into drugs and she has yeah. this boyfriend who's a bad influence and yes and that's a whole other story like and that has a lot of sadness to it i think that was probably the saddest one that's probably story. the saddest yeah. but again i think in the end there's a bit of hope but um yes. yes again i mean i was just i suppose i've got young daughters myself and i think i was projecting forward and thinking what was the absolutely worst thing that could ever happen with them um and seeing these kind of yeah. sweet um innocent creatures yeah. overnight sort of turn into teenage monsters which I gather can happen um, and to the you know people who think they're doing everything right um, can still end up with children who give them a very hard time and I was kind of interested in exploring all that. Um, it's, so. it's really very relatable and I love the way that you put your own life experiences into it. Yes though I've never been a drug addict or an no, alcoholic no, 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 or no. gone to oh. find them. <laughs> it's, it's, it's things you because you, you're yes. a journalist you be, you're influenced or it's your friends yes. or people you see and yes you put it all into this book. And I do it creates yeah. It's all these really fascinating stories. Like. Yeah. What was the hardest one to write about and research? Um, well, I think probably the most traumatic one was um, the story of the of the alcoholic mother, um, yeah. Sue's mother, who dies of alcoholism. Because um, I talked to a lot of women whose mothers were alcoholics and read a lot of books around the subject, um, and it's just heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, I think you don't think of women really as being alcoholics. You don't, and mothers, especially in um, because it's yes. interesting because you made it an Indian woman. Yes, which you don't usually no think about. That, like well, that. people were saying. No. Are Indians allowed to be alcoholics no, and things true. like that? And I was it's saying, true. well, it's you know, it, yeah. my Indian friends drink just like like yeah. I do. Um, so why not? You know, and um, and in fact, um, she's Punjabi, the mother Deepika, and Punjabis, I gather, are the party Indians. They are. They yeah. love a party and love a <laughs> drink. Know, apparently, they like to have a party. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing: is any race, any culture, you know, anything can happen to you. And I wanted to explore that and not have it. It's, I think that people are very stereotypical, and it's all like, oh, Indians are sort of good people who mm. go to the it's temple. It's true. And, yeah, people think and, that. Yeah, totally. and. Um, um, and of course, any race is like any other, and they have their problems, and they have their great bits happen to people. But it was, yeah, it was really sad researching that because I think the worst thing about um, a mother being an alcoholic is that your mother should be there for you at all times. That's yeah. the kind of role of a mother. And all the women I spoke to with alcoholic mothers said the worst thing was their mo the mother kind of loved the bottle more than she loved them, or well, that's yeah. how it seemed to them growing up because she always prioritised drinking over her family and she could never be relied on to turn up at school to pick them up or anything like that no. and it just broke my heart hearing these stories it really did well i really felt for all the characters in this and um zoo obviously i mean obviously she's the main center point for the whole thing because she's the one that brings the dating agency into play like trying to find love for her father yeah but obviously that doesn't quite work to start with no but i really like zoo as a character i really felt for her and you just want her to find peace with herself yeah because she just runs away she's trying to run away all the time yeah and uh, do you know did you meet anyone who was a little bit like that? Is that well, again, that? I mean, I've been, you know, I don't know if lucky is quite the word, but I've been to sort of various war zones and things in my career and met lots of aid workers, which is what Zoo becomes. And in my experience, um, these like people that. are often d quite damaged and um, they often are running away from something at home. So I want, I was, I was exploring that. Well, I, th I thought it was a fantastic book oh, thank you. about real life people and you turned it on its head a little bit. So yeah, it's fantastic. I, said, I hope it was funny too. <laughs> it was funny. It really made me laugh. The dating agency Phew. was brilliant. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you very much, Julia. Thank you. Fantastic book. 10 Minutes to Fall in Love.